Get it back to the table um, and sort of uh, monitor the impact of the idea on who you are so we can start drawing in a more um, encompassing way and a more total way. Um, that's the aim of this forum is that you can be released um, into that situation that you get totally resourced. But your philosophy, your attitude to drawing and what drawing is, is absolutely um, pivotal to doing good work. Um, and developing your language and developing your translation. So I don't want to craft you um, or package the image or what, I don't want you to package the image. I just want you to um, develop a really uh, strong relationship with your hand. Um, and a lot of that is beyond our control. It's not something that we necessarily have total control over. But we do um, have access to who we are. Um, and a lot of that is getting that information on the paper building on that and seeing what it means. Um, so those are going to be the strategies that we're going to uh, engage for the first number of minutes so we can let go. Just let go of any, um, uh, any uh, preconception about what drawing is. Drawing is actually something that we uh, personally are inhabited by and it can't be sort of uh, poisoned on you. It's something that we have to discover, in other words. Yeah. and relevant to who he is. So this image here belongs to him, right? It's not an image out of a book or a theory. It's the kind of thing he does when he draws. So that idea of drawing being um, an intimate monitor of your experience um, is what the history of art is about. Very important to identify your own relevance and your own part in the drawing equation. Can you me see that happen here? So dynamic drawing simply means um, equating that dynamic with your own authenticity. And you can see that sense of authenticity in wavelength uh, emerging here in this uh, series of images. And I would recommend any 80-year-old to come and have a go <laughs> because it, it really turns your life upside down and uh, gives you an impetus to do something different and, and immerse, immerse yourself in a whole new ball game. And Ron has been so supportive. Um, never experienced um, a life class before, and the way he he uh, proceeds is. Uh, so different to what I'm used to going back in my history of learning uh, when everything was didactic and you only drew everything that you were exactly told to do, you know, one of those. So it's been wonderful. Um, we can't thank him enough. Take that home and turn it into something like that with paint. Uh, and that's just a, che a cheap box of paints. I think I paid eight dollars for it. While I'm here, I play with that. What's given me is uh, permission. He gives everybody who steps into the room permission to be themselves, and not only does he do it in a theoretical way, he gives us a real practical 
process to do that because it's exercises and techniques of drawing with your left hand and closing your eyes and every step of the way he gives us encouragement and positive affirmations and it's through that process that over time we become more and more comfortable with ourselves so that's definitely been my experience. I was always a drawer since I was a kid, but really drawing became more familiar for me and more integral to my way of being through coming to Ron's classes. It's like when I do his practice, when I come to the classes, it's like I see my life reflected um, on the paper before me. So. Not only does it become a sense of me being myself, but a sense of me understanding who I am, which, um, as I've learned, is an ongoing, an ongoing practice, an ongoing realisation. So, yeah, everything about his class has just made me um, a better person. So how do you guys see this kind of thing? Uh, okay, Naomi, you're saying it's amazing. Very complete. Yeah, you think compositionally yeah. strong? It's like um, the, the middle point in chaos and structure. Yeah, okay. So at some point he's found a kind of resolution through opposition. There's all this fragmentation, and yet all, these, all the uh, players in the orchestra are hitting the notes. It's like the way that music isn't rational. A piece of music's not rational and yet it touches your heart. So that same thing here with colour and line and form can be seemingly chaotic and yet touch you on a deeper kind of aesthetic level. So I, I really, I think that's the main thing, your sense of um, tuning, quite extreme. In a way, uh, in some situations, drawing reveals the extremist in you. Oh yeah, last week we were talking about that um, the women who run with the wolves and the skeleton lady. And the skeleton lady comes out, up out of a field of flowers because of Mexican mythology. And instead of it being scary and death-like, that skeleton actually is, is a doorkeeper and that skeleton opens up a field of flowers. It's, it's not necessarily, it's a death in one sense, but it's also a giver of life in another sense. So that, I love the, um, it's like doors of perception, like Aldous Huxley or something. It's kind of